Good afternoon, everybody. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, welcome to uh, our 45 minute session on, uh, on uh, recruiting and orchestrating a pressure defense. Um, my name's Coach Brown, defensive coordinator at Arizona. Been here about, uh, for a short period of time, about six weeks. Uh, absolutely loving it. And, uh, Anxious to chat with you today about some uh, some important topics. So, without further ado, let's get it rolling. Okay, um, first thing um, in our in our discussion is uh, what is our recruiting approach and philosophy here at at Arizona, and um, and again, you know, just some of the important points that, uh, you know, that I feel are, are just so strategic in the decisions that you make in recruiting, okay? Uh, first one, when you're watching a prospect, okay, so you're, 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 you're sitting down, you're going to watch the tape, and, and you're going to delve into this young man as a player, you know, look at the things that the guy can do. Don't be concerned, overly concerned with what their deficiencies are. What can a guy do well, okay? And then in, in, with that being said, you want to go ahead and then take the strengths and think critically about how they can be beneficial and incorporated into your defense. So, for example, you got a guy that can cover – you know, match up well and cover tight end. Well, let him do that. Um, you've got an outstanding uh, internal blitzer, may not have a great pass rush scenario, but is a tremendous internal blitzer. Well, what's an internal blitzer? A guy that has timing, a guy that can, uh, you know, match the cadence and hit it on the run. Uh, a guy that can use his hands on the move, a guy that can get skinny and turn his shoulders and find his way into the gaps, a guy that can put the hands on the hip of the adjacent lineman. So all those types of scenarios are important and critical scenarios, okay? Now, well, he's not a great run defender. Well, don't put him in there to, run, to defend the run. Put them in there when it's when the time is, you know, you determine, hey, you know, we do all that practice, you know, they're third and four or more, it's a hundred percent, it's a demarcation point, it's a hundred percent pass. Get them in there for those kind of downs and let them do what he does well. Uh, it's amazing when you do that. The confidence that will then become prevalent in the player. And then all of a sudden, he's a better run defender. So, you know, that's, that's a big piece, okay? I hope I don't, you know, hurt anybody's feelings here. But don't be fooled by the star power, okay? If a guy can play and you deem he can play and you feel confident that this is a guy that can play in your system, take him. Wow, Coach, he only has three stars. Who cares? Don't let people try to talk you out of what you think is important. If a guy can uh, maximize a role, great run defender, good, uh, good against double teams, uh, can set an edge, whatever those things are, and you deem, your eyes see it, trust what you see, and make good decisions. Don't let people try to make decisions for you, okay? Um, one category that I just think there's no sacrifice is speed is of the essence, okay? Uh, you know, I say it in jest all the time to the players. What would you rather be, a bullet or a slug? And, a, and, and obviously, you know, they'll comment, comment back to me, coach, I'd rather be a bullet. That, you want guys that can get from point A to point B in a hurry. Now, if you, the more guys you can put on the field that you deem run well, those guys are going to, all of a sudden, your, your ability to, 
in terms of missed tackles is going to go down because you just have more people at the party. And that's what you're searching for. Get them all at the party. Get as many guys as you can. And do not, do not sacrifice at any point the ability to run the ball. Well, you know, this guy, you know, he's not a great run to the ball guy. Then don't put him in the game. Because I promise you somewhere along the line, it's going to come back and bite you. So, you know, that's an important period. That's an important deal. Okay. Um, you know, I got a line up there from, uh, from uh, Sun Tzu and I'm a, I'm a big, I've used a lot of their stuff in our, in our philosophy statements, but you want to make sure you coordinate your tactics, meaning your fundamentals with strategy. Well, the strategy part is making sure that you're making the kinds of decisions that on the critical thirds down, third downs will get you off the field. And, and a big part of that is, you know, uh, understanding who the pass rushers are and what they're capable of doing. Okay, I've got a couple of case studies for you that I, that I think are, uh, are important to evaluate. Uh, these guys both played for me and I recruited both guys. So uh, obviously I feel very, very strongly about both of these young men. Um, case study number one, Josh Uche, went to Columbus High School in Miami, Florida. Great player for me, great player. Uh, he, he came out of uh, high school, he was roughly 6'1". He was 215 pounds. He was a defensive end, outside linebacker. Uh, I guess, you know, the pundits rated him as the 707th ranked player in the country. And uh, he was the 98th ranked player in the state of Florida. His senior year, uh, he had 50 tackles, 14 sacks, two forced fumbles. And obviously, those numbers across the board are pretty darn good when you talk about havoc rate. And what I'm focused on is his sack totals, his forced fumbles. I think, you know, obviously that was always an area of strength for him was the ability to create havoc. Okay. Uh, when I evaluated him, okay, he's a long athletic pass rusher. He had phenomenal twitch. So his quickness was the thing that was going to get him to where he had where he needed to go. Uh, that was always an important trait. Uh, obviously, he was undersized. Even in high school as a defensive end, you would classically say that he was somewhat undersized, but he had tremendous get off. Okay. So in, in keeping with my philosophy statement, looking at the things that he does well and not his deficiencies, the, the key thing for me is he had phenomenal twitch and get off. Uh, you know, I rated it as in the top 1%. Now, other people felt differently about him, obviously, when you look at 707th ranked player. But I think if you just took that one area of uh, strength, and that's his pass rush ability, um, you have a hard time not grading this guy out as an elite, elite prospect, okay? So that's point one. Now here's a picture of him, you know, coming out of high school, uh, six, one and three eighths, 221, up to, you know, 251 at max, probably has leveled out around 238, 239. And, uh, you know, he's done a tremendous job of developing himself uh, as an athlete, you know, and that's strength, power, explosion. He, he just got better and better and better in those areas. Okay, just uh, let's, take a, let's take a look at some of the things that we asked him to do, okay? He's on the right-hand part of the screen. He's number six. And we're gonna run a twist stunt on the opposite side of him. 
and we're going to get him a one-on-one. -on -one. So him and the tackle, we're going to get him a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And you can see first two steps, speed to power, arm under, throw the outside arm, get on the ball, and away he goes. Okay? Just, a, just an outstanding play. Now, one of the things of note with him is his junior year, he played virtually every meaningful pass type snap or second and third down snap. We did play him some on first down, but we made sure on every pass down when he was, uh, that he was on the field and had a chance to create havoc. That's, that's what we were trying to get done. Okay, here's the second snap, very similar stunt. He's running the gash stunt again. Now just focus on him against 72 here in the individual rush, okay? Notice we have the outside leg up, okay? He's in a sprinter's uh, posture. Shoulders down, pads down, weights loaded on the front foot so we don't fall step, and it's on your mark, get set, go, okay? Now, notice he catches the tackle going backwards and gets his balance knocked off, you know, again, in a speed-to-power posture. So he's coming off. He's striking with the hat and the hands. And then he get, gets him on his skates and just, you know, he never allowed the tackle to recover. Low man wins, okay? Man off the ball wins. And obviously he got some help from his teammates there. But again, you know, here, here's the thing that you load him up with. I tell him, Josh, we're going to make sure that we get you as many one-on-one -on -one pass rush opportunities as we can. So there's, there's that piece right there. Okay, third snap. All right, now he's down in this picture on the edge, okay? And if you notice the common thread so far is he's been on the edge. Uh, here he is. Uh, rushing through the outside part of the tight end. And again, that sprinter's posture and away he goes. So on second step, he beats the tight end to the spot and it unloads and extends his inside arm and takes him right back into the quarterback, which obviously creates confusion and away we go. Now, the other important thing to note here is when you watch 35, he is on his back. He is now up and running, and he is leading the way down the field in terms of getting this thing blocked, okay? And this goes back to my number one trait. You don't run, you don't play, and I don't care who you are. But with a guy like this, you don't have to tell him to run. He's going to run. Okay? So he catches him. Again, low man wins. Speed to power. Stays on the outside edge. And away we go. Your next call. All right, we're going to move the defense here. And obviously, there he is on the edge. Okay, so we have moved the defense and now we jab step him up the field and then we uh, movement in front of him. So the tackle and nose are, are working their way to the weak side. The strong side end is rushing off the edge and doing a, doing a solid job. And then obviously he's gonna go to the front side, what I declare as a hook zone. So, You've got two inner hook zones and you've got two curl zones in the, in the rush pattern. He's going to the front side hook and he plays through the guard and makes the play. And again, 
you know, we like to move the defense based on protection. So we've got the center now going to our right as we look at it. And then obviously the guard doesn't even see him. And then he kind of pushes off the guard and makes the play. So you've seen him line up on the edge and rush the edge in three different occasions. Now he's lined up on the edge and he rushes through the front side rush lane, the front side inside or hook rush lane uh, for, for another uh, havoc play. Okay, uh, now we're gonna go ahead and get into Tradish twist game. So he and 19 are working together. And we're gonna go ahead and make this a dual pattern in both, both uh, sets there of, of partners of two will, will execute the same stunt. The difference is 19 does a great job of putting his hands on the guard, okay? He starts them up and inside and then loops. Uh, Uche, one, two, stick his foot in the ground, get his helmet down nice and low. He's like waist height. And I'm going to show you an important coaching point here for six. As he goes and comes off the ball, and he one twos it, he'll not only stick his helmet into the B gap, he's sticking his hands. You see him reaching for the guard. If that guard turns on him, he wants to make sure that he's got that inside leverage so he can ricochet to the ball, which you can see happen. He put the hands on the guard. So now he by the guard and ricochets to the ball. We're pretty good. All right, uh, very similar pattern. He's on the top of the screen. Again, we got him working with 19. And he takes that inside rush lane, sticks his hat in the hole, Hands go to the guard, and he gets through. So here's your picture. Six, 19 working together. He starts up through the B gap. Okay. Now notice he keeps driving, and he's got leverage on the guard. Now, the tackle's going to have to ricochet off to get the end block, and when he does, six, you know, just finishes his rush and continues to the quarterback because he has leverage on 75. Okay, so when you look at Josh, his collegiate and NFL production, okay, in college, 19 and a half TFLs, 15 and a half sacks, three force fumbles, Really came into his own uh, midway through his junior season. Uh, he ended up being a second round draft pick to the New England Patriots. Um, first year in the NFL, he played nine games. He had two TFLs, one sack, seven quarterback hits. So here's the point. The things that he did well in college, he did well in the NFL. And that's that's a be those are beautiful traits now, especially as, it, as this translates to the pro game where a lot of throw game is important and uh, the quarterback play is at a high elite level. You want to make sure you can rush the quarterback in all kinds of uh, formations, patterns, but it really comes down to four, five, and six-man rush. That's what it really comes down to. And you can see what he excelled in it in college. You know, he's continued to excel and that's his elite pass rush level. So at the end of the day, he went from the 707th rated prospect 
uh, coming out of high school to the 60th uh, player taken in the draft, which shows his work, his tenacity, his ability to get better at his craft. And, uh, you know, there's my first case study for you today. Okay, the next case study is uh, Quiddy Pay. And Quiddy also is a defensive end. As a prospect, he was somewhere around 6'4", 225, 226, coming out of high school. He's from, uh, he's from the state of Rhode Island and uh, obviously had a great career, Bishop Hendrickson. He was the 949th ranked player in the country. I'm gonna say that again. He was the 949th ranked player in the country. He was the 45th ranked defensive end in the country, okay? His production as a senior in high school, 65 tackles, four and a half sacks, 12 TFLs, all strong numbers, okay? This is a guy recruited since he was a freshman. Okay, evaluation. A strong player, extremely athletic, open side end has an elite change of direction. And that was the thing that jumped off the screen for me. This guy had an elite change of direction. So in our system, okay, where we're not just straight line rushing all the time, you're constantly looking for guys that are high level change of direction guys because of the amount of blitzing and pressure we do. And just as exhibited with Josh Uche, with all the movement he had, we wanted Quiddy to have those same type traits. The more kind of guys you can get like this, the better your chances are of getting off the field on third down. Uh, once again, the big point there is uh, elite change of direction. All right, so there's his picture just a couple years ago, 245. Now he's 277. He's 6'5 and 5'6'2 and 5'8. Okay. So uh, you know that's the that gives you the measurable. All right. So what can this guy do well? Okay. I always classify pretty pay as the absolute best spread run defender I've ever seen on the edge, okay? So here's an example to start with. You got 19 on the edge here, okay? Obviously the tackle down blocks and he closes, we call that pupping. The, uh, the, G, the uh, H tight end comes across the formation, and bypasses Quiddy Pay, the defensive end. He's hunting the safety, okay? So Quiddy now has to take over the inside half of the bluff play. So if that quarterback turns the ball up right now, anywhere inside the tight end, he's got it. If his job is to force the ball out to the perimeter, and in this case, we're spinning the safety. And obviously, he's now in position to take the quarterback all the way to the sideline. All right, here it is from the tight. And you'll see 19, close, and chase. Right down the line. Okay. An outstanding spread run defender. Okay, another example of defending the spread run. Take 19, the tight end's over his head. The tackle blocks down. He now closes and pups and dents 74, the puller, the guard puller. Okay, 44 is on the back. Okay, we want to make sure we get that defended. Seven 
needs to do a better job of getting over the top of the tackle. He thinned himself off here, Khalif. And 29 is the crease play. So what down the hill he comes, which should then fire the safety. Okay, so here's your picture. They're gonna run what we call the sucker, but they're gonna bring the tight end away. Down comes 19, he pups it. So now 44 is on the back, here comes 29. And notice how well he plays, in essence, both sides of the block. We do not teach the wrong arm spill technique. We want to teach shoulder square, pup technique, and dent the guard puller so that we can play, have the chance to play a gap and a half or both sides of the block. Okay, next play. This is a uh, slash read. So obviously this is a two of them play, an Adam play. So in this picture, Quiddy is over the tight end and they're gonna zone for width. And we call this the slash play, the off tackle, inside leg of the tackle, uh, zone play. Well, the key is to knock back the tackle, which he does. Comes out of his shoes and knocks him back. And once again, has put himself in position to play both sides of the block. Now we're running a five man go here and we're bringing the mic backer off the backside. Now you see 97 on the close. And 44, instead of burying his head against the wall here, he's got the hard zone play away from him. He's going to become the bender. Okay? And that's what he's doing in that picture. He is becoming the bender. Okay, uh, third and 11. This is a straight rush, okay? So 19's on the bottom. He's gonna rush the edge. Six is on the top. He's gonna rush the strong edge. And we're gonna go ahead and what we call play cover with 97. So he'll push the guard and then he'll kind of control the middle and it allows the three of the four rushes to go hard. Okay, we're in, you know, a, a doubles deal here. So we're bracketing the coverage, but the key is watch 19 rush. And for that matter, six as well. The six does a good job. Again, one of his strengths is getting under, under the pads of the OT and he closes that box. Now he doesn't get credit for it, but he should get half a cookie because uh, 19, you know, uh, eight kind of gets uh, pushed back there just a little bit, holds the ball, and then 19 turns the corner. Okay, one of the big things that we're really teaching our guys is to throw the outside hand uh, in the pass rush. And Coach Hunley, our defensive line coach, has been really, you know, selling that to our players, and we're we're seeing that function at a high level so far. So that's one of the techniques that I think is really, really important: is have your edge. You can see 19 at the very end; he throws his outside in, and we're trying to poke away at the at the ball, poke him in the eye. Whatever we got to do, we got to do. Okay, here we go again. We're going to run the gash stunt with 19. Six is on the bottom. So he's in speed to power mode. Okay, and 19, you know, you'll see when we run gash, we're going to start up the field. So it's almost like four and 19 are running the dance step 
and then 19 gets into the B gap and 97 runs what we call the wrap. And the nice thing here, six does a good job on the backside. He gets to the party. 97, the wrapper, he gets to the party. But 19 showing that elite change of direction gets through the double. And, uh, you know, he gets the primary cookie. But we'll divide it and give, uh, give each guy a piece of the cookie. Okay, next one. We're in a, what we call our, you know, our form of the bare front. Everybody runs some form of it. 19's on the back edge here. And we got him as a stand up and 59 as the stand up. And, uh, you know, they're trying to uh, freeze us here, not move the offensive line. And uh, obviously, uh, we don't stop. We keep going. Okay, so the evaluation of Quiddy Pay is this, okay? Uh, obviously, he's placing his, you know, he's, he's in the draft and all that good stuff, but he's come from 949th prospect to being a, a suspected first-round draft pick. His college career, he's got 97 total tackles. 23 and a half of those are TFLs. 11 and a half of those are sacks with one forced fumble. Uh, again, he's projected to be a first round pick. But here's a guy that coming out of the, you know, you see the old guy in the background there standing there watching their state championship game. Uh, but here's a guy that when he was coming out of high school, you know, didn't have much acclaim and he's gonna obviously have a chance to be a uh, uh, first round draft pick. And, you know, I don't know how many stars he had. Uh, I really don't. Um, and, I, and, and I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just saying, make decisions that impact your scheme. Things that you think are important as a coach that, you know, and, and when I looked at him, I said, this guy is a smart football player. He'll be a tremendous spread run defender. He had elite change of direction, which helps him in his pass rush quality. And even in the NFL, where a lot of the run game is going towards the college game, to be quite honest, you know, those things are kind of important. Okay. So we're going to move on here. Okay. What about having a mindset when we're creating pressure packages and the patterns for those pressure packages? Okay. First off, you have to have a way to communicate it to the players and you know, that, that system has got to be designed by you, the coach, okay? So when you're a pressure-based defense, it requires you real simply, you got to be all in. There's no halfway. You're either in or you're not in. And the first sign of uh, adversity, you tuck your tail and run and hide. The players are going to see right through it and they're not gonna believe it. They're not going to believe it. So you gotta make sure if you're a pressure defense, you're a pressure defense. I tell them all the time, guys, let me tell you, we give up an explosive play, I promise you the next play is gonna be a pressure because that's who we are, okay? So with my feeling on that, I think it's a real important deal 
to have a mindset. And the players will follow your lead. And I'd rather have my guys playing on the balls of their feet than their heels. And, uh, you know, obviously some people may disagree with me and that's fine. I'm good. Uh, and when all my, and when my boss disagrees with me, I can go back to Cape Cod and that's fine too. Okay. But my point is this is an aggressive game played by young aggressive men. And that's the way we're going about our business. All right. First off, you got to have simplicity built into your packages and patterns that allows your players to play fast. In other words, they can't be bogged down with several checks. You make your call, you run the call. Um, how do you line up? Well, we have two systems. We have a static system and a variable system. The variable is a matchup system. So that requires us to know where the tight end is, where the receivers are, and, and uh, obviously where the formation strength is. When we go to static, we just need to know where the strength is and that way we can line everybody up. Now for us, it's real simple. We call a number. If there's a number involved, it's a variable system. If there's no number and it's just a word, then it's a static system. So for example, if I said 43 red, Okay, that means you got to know where the tight end is and where the strength of the formation is. If I said stud green eye, no numbers involved, I need to know the formation strength and I line up. And for us, that becomes an important feature because it allows you to align up quickly a versus tempo team. So that's one of the things that I firmly believe it. Okay, I've talked about this in the recruiting piece. Now you get to your players and then now with so much movement, it's so important to evaluate your own players. Make sure that you figure out what they can do well and then go let them do it. So that point is really important. All right, you want to present the offense with, with several concepts that, you know, can challenge them in, in uh, alignment phases and blocking and all those things, protections, all the things that we want to be good at, you know, you, we, we feel you've got to have some variety, okay? Now, the other thing that's grown prevalent for me over the last couple of years is the ability to simulate pressure. Meaning you still bring four rushers, which is standard operating procedure as we all know, but you bring a second and third level player and probably from an overload type of situation or from a max pressure alignment situation, that allows you to make the quarterback feel like he's being blitzed. But at the end of the day, you're able to play uh, a, 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 an abundance of different coverages that you have at your own disposal that are in your package. And, uh, you know, with very little uh, extra learning for your guys. But I'm a big believer in blitz simulation. And, uh, you know, we got some good things that kind of show that, okay? Uh, one of my Sun Tzu lines on the bottom, being on the offensive puts you in control and forces the foe to react rather than to act. And again, we want to be the ones that have multiple formations. We want to be the ones that have uh, multiple uh, pressure schemes. We want to make sure that we're controlling the tempo, they're not. Okay, let's talk about dividing what's important, okay? First off, before you come out and start talking all these pressures, here's the one thing that I want you to evaluate. You've got to stand for something. Me personally, 
It has always been about stop the run first. Stop the run first. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, there's several ways to do it. Through your bases. We have four of them. Okay? Uh, through your pressures, your run game pressure. These are things that are tried and true that you as a coordinator say, hey, you know, I know I can stop the run in this one. I, and I don't, you know, I can't control your system and tell you what's best. That's, that's what makes the world go round. For me, I want to have the ability to be a four-down team and a three-down team and be able to run pressure, pressure you from both looks. Okay? The one thing that I've noticed is sometimes people are ready for the yard and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they are. Okay? And in our four-down, if they get big and I have to go bigger, I want to have that ability. But I also like to play it in our four down and, uh, you know, obviously come off that ball with an aggressive mindset or add in the uh, linebacker plugs. And again, with all in the mind that we're going to stop the run. Okay. All right. Pass game and pressures out of the pass game. And obviously this is what we're talking about. You want to use fronts. I call them exotic fronts. You can call it whatever you want, but the bottom line is you want to use fronts that will test or stress protection. Uh, usually that's, that comes with a walk-up method from backers, awkward alignments out of your front, uh, putting three linemen on one side or the other, and uh, also utilizing different rush patterns out of each of these looks. And then once again, the simulated pressure deal ties in with what we're talking about. So in our run game pressures, one of the, I just decided that I would feature two four down pressures and two three down pressures, okay? Now, again, these are plugs. These are bringing the extra guy. And in some cases, it's, uh, you know, I have two, two uh, particular cases out of four down and two out of three down, but both equally as effective. So here's our first one here. It's called 71 Tan City. You know, I mean, I, we all have our own wording systems that we use. Again, it's a variable deal. How do you know? Because I got numbers in the front. All right, so in this picture, okay, it's an unleft call. It's also a tight left call. So now all guys can line up, okay? All right, so we are in a uh, one over one type of look. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have a, you know, a lot of movement up front. So if you watch 73, he's gonna go into the A gap and the center blocks back. We're going to wrap the nose. The anchor is going to pop. You can see him come up on his feet. We are now closing and B gap entry for 33. And we're bringing the backside Will linebacker to the edge of the defense. And he's left undone on the perimeter. Okay. Now we're in a 11 personnel. Look, it's on right, tight right, and we're running that tan stun again. So why don't we just go to the back of this so you can see it. So here's the anchor. He's going to play solid six. Peppers is the overhang, the grill. 73 enters the A gap. The nose enters the front side B gap. The mic goes back to the back side A. The end tracks and gets into the B gap and there's the will on the edge again. So in this picture, the good thing is 42 is left unblocked. With all that movement, you can see 42 is left unblocked. I'll take that day, any day of the week. Okay. So now we move on. 
to a double twist, okay? We're gonna twist the strong side. We're gonna trip, twist the weak side from our four down structure. We travel the Viper on the tight end. And this is a picture of, of what I'm talking about. If you watch the nose and cross his face, that center expected him to be in that A-gap. He backdoors it. Now we're running a twist between 19 and 50 on the backside. And we're entering the B-gap. I mean, you can see that they're, they're zoning for the, for the 36 to backer. And the tackle zoning for 15, and he goes backdoor. And we get five yards of penetration, and we get a cookie. Seven's on the edge. But that's what that looks like. All right, same call. Same call. Uh, Bear Joker. Okay, so the Y or number three has come back. So it goes from a vacant set back to a one back set, and the linebacker comes back with it. Okay, we're going to run that same pattern. So I want to show you this from close up. So this end is going to enter the B gap. And when he does, you can see the mic is hunting the linebacker. And 73 takes his steps. And we go by him because we're going in the opposite direction. 90 goes to the front side A. And we twist the two guys up front. All right, so let's move to the 3-3 three, three stack, okay? So in this picture, the strength is I'm left, tight left, all right? We're bringing the Sam linebacker, okay? The end is entering the B gap. The will is entering the C gap. I'll show it to you from this. You can see six is the blitzer. He's entering the, the front side A gap. Okay, 97. He's got the puck. So he's got to control the edge. Four has got to get in the B gap. 29 will dent. The guard pull. And 40. Or just tracks the ball from the inside out. And again, you know, we get the negative yardage play. All right, so here we go again. We're going to run the same pattern. Okay, but we hit the front side A with the Sam. The end and will run the twister. The nose goes behind the Sam. So there we are all gapped out. So here's your picture. Seven has got that B gap where the, where the uh, tight end is. He's going to go ahead. He's got to play that B gap. And watch him utilize his hands to handle 87. That's a pretty good job right there. 30 does everything he has to to get into that gap between number one and number two. And that leaves the corner unblocked. Okay, the beauty of man coverage is you got one more on the line of scrimmage than they got. That's a big deal. Okay, moving to our last one. This is a little bit of a, again, a variable stunt. But we're gonna basically blitz the seven, blitz the Viper off the edge. We're going to slant to the A gap, uh, to the B gap, the A gap, and the, and the C gap with the uh, anchor nose and end. And the Sam is going to pop and cover the tight end. Okay. So let's go to the tight so you can see this. That gives you a little bit of the big picture window, but here's the actual pressure. So seven comes. And notice how he, he's going to check the back 
to make sure he doesn't have the ball. Once he notices that or feels that, he then transfers to the quarterback. Now, I was dead set against this, and Khalid Hudson taught me to do that. He said, Coach, I can see it. So with that being said, you just trusted him and let him do his thing. Okay? All right. So here we are in the uh, past game stuff. And, and this really evolves every year. But you can see we're going in the Mike's week, the Will's week. We're moving and grooving. I call it being in the schoolyard. You want to go ahead and move around the best you can to create issues in the protection. We know where we're going. Just make sure you can get there. Okay? So here we are from the tight. And you'll see seven is going to join the fray. And we're going to read the footwork of the, of the offensive line. So as we step, we're looking for the adjacent window. So 52, he sets on 19. We're jabbing and going under him, okay? Nine sets on 66. 66 sets on nine. He jabs him and goes under him. And then 73, when the guard steps down, he jabs and crosses his face, and it creates space for us. Okay, here's another rep of that. Again, you'll see the mic's kind of moving around, moving and grooving. Now he's over on the weak side. Here comes seven. He'll pop out and play the back. And again, you know, I can't, I tell the guys all the time, you've got to go 100 miles an hour. I cannot predict where the breakdown in protection is going to come. All I can predict is, we got a heck of a chance of one of those guys coming free. So if you look at the guard, the, the left guard, he steps down to 73 and 73 crosses him and he's now cut the protection in half and he gets home with a, or is cooked. Sean Gary on the edge on the rush, which is good. And 15, he's going, you know, guard sets on him. He goes into the A-gap. And the edge rusher has to stay on the edge. All right, this turbo front. And again, this is a two threes. Two edges, okay? So they're in vacant. And we're going to go ahead and bring the fifth guy. Okay. So we really want to attract 68. So we tell that that's no fair dodge technique right through the face and the hip of that tackle. And that allows Gabriel uh, to be untouched. Okay. Here it is again from a different angle and the ball comes out quick. And I'll take that all day long, okay? And a good job and tackle there by Jordan Lewis. So again, same pressure. Again, you see the no fair dodge, we're running right through the guard and that gets five to the point of attack. Okay, this next one is called matrix or matrix cross. So here we are in this picture and you'll see the mics walking around here like he's gonna enter. So we have the anchor, the tackle, the nose, the end, and the mic walks over to the strong side and he's gonna take over contain. All right, we got good matchups everywhere. Viper has uh, taken the back. And uh, obviously, we're bringing Uche into the A gap. We're rushing the tackle through the B gap. And it's just, again, it's really a four man rush with man coverage. And we're in great shape.
Sorry about that. Do it again. All right, here it is from a close up. So six and 50 are going to work together with 50 pushing vertically. And there comes six. Okay. Notice 19, he's kind of our cover guy. So he'll eat up 66. And we get two guys to the point of attack, 70, uh, 15 on the win and six on the A-gap potion. There's another sample of it. They motion out, so one takes them. And again, that's a hybrid receiver, so notice we covered him with a corner. We lay that out. All right, this will be the last call here. So you can see one on the run. There's the cross. Now notice this time on the cross, we're bringing the mic, okay? We got them in the slide protection and we bring the mic and away we go, okay? Well, there it is. There's, a, there's my presentation for today. Hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, been doing this quite a while. Have, I, I'm, and I'm pretty set in my ways about certain things. But uh, I think you got to stand for something, man. And, uh, the, you know, figure out what, what's important to you in this great game and what you're going to sell to your players. And enjoy the heck out of the players, okay? Uh, great being with you today, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.